Okay, select it. That's what you're trying to select. And there's something I haven't mentioned yet. You're trying to select leaders, people for leadership. You're trying to select people who never really go to be leaders, but they're, they're you know, decent soldiers. Um, people for special training and people for elimination. Let me tell you about elimination. Running the set of live fires by battalions. And there's a lieutenant. He's a black kid. The black part is only significant for another reason. Um, but he's unbelievably stupid. Okay. His name, we'll call him Fitzgerald. He's a Fitzgerald. And it's, he, he just failed miserably the a deliberate attack. He failed miserably to get in He's supposed to be doing a night ambush. He gets lost. And there are minefields out in the city. Snowshoe minefields. Well, we use blue. You know, discs. Pink and blue. And, you know, he stopped in the middle of a minefield. And I walk up and tap him and say, you know, Lieutenant Fitzgerald, do you know where you are? We're in the middle of a minefield, fucking idiot. Boom! Yeah. Right, and, and it was all like that. And the battalion commander went on this one, because he was the worst battalion. The battalion commander went on this one, and he's just shaking his head. And I know what he's thinking. He's thinking, I need to shoot this kid before we go to war. <laughs> because I don't want my boys under him. So I tell the battalion commander later, bring the day commander out tomorrow. Right? But he doesn't like me. Bring him out anyway. He likes me. Okay. And I went to this, this another mic. This is where it came to get a kid named Dirty Coleman. So you can find him because I wanted him in my company, like I said. Uh, and I said, you know, Bernie, tell me about this. Tell me about this, Gerald. And he said, oh, Jesus, he's such a good Okay, so you guys aren't going to object if I get rid of him, right? Oh, no, 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 no. I can speak for every black defense of county. Get rid of that motherfucker. We don't want him. <laughs> okay. So the day commander came out, and he got to see Lieutenant Fitzgerald uh, perform, <laughs> and he came to me and said, take a rehab transfer? I don't know. No, no. This, this isn't a moral issue. This, this kid is just stupid. Never should have been commissioned. He went to a school that should have been shut down, or a Trotsky program that should have been shut down. There's no business in the army at any rate. Just get rid of him. And he's like, yeah, I'll follow my sword over this one. I'll go with The kid was gone with 48 hours. That's elimination. That's selection, okay? And you couldn't do that. You didn't do right training. That little bastard would have been around, you might have been a turtle on I don't know. Okay. <laughs> just, just go ahead and read that one. I'm not going to let you there anymore. Schedule. 
you know, uh, such and such just canceled their range, they're willing to give you the ammunition, range control is willing to give you the range, and I can jump from doing the shit bullshit that we were going to do into doing a delivered attack fly bar within half an hour. Do it. But you need some stupid things to do. But that's one way to get more ammunition. Do it. How long are we going to do that? Twice a month, probably. Um, and mother's milk. It's an expression, you know, you took something in with mother's milk. What it really means is you did it as a child. I talked about the foreign officer. They come to us good and they leave good after it, of course. Or they come to us as shit and they leave as shit. But we can't change them in the slightest because they didn't learn the right values at mom's knee. Yeah, sure. As someone who was a crappy, uh, you know, logistics rem, I can tell you, if you find us cool shit to take home with us, we'll be more than happy to beg, borrow, and steal anything we can for you. It's true. <laughs> sir, You'd be amazed what I got for a case of Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest thing I find about Mother's Milk is Mother's is the first one to blame you for not fixing their baby. Here it is, yeah, I didn't really have that problem back then. That's a 21st century problem. It, it is a, uh, it's a Gen Xer, it's a millennial problem. Ultimately, that means it's a boomer problem. Yeah, because we did. But yeah, times have changed in that respect. Now, past condition of standards. Everything we do in the Army, and the Marines have, I think, slightly different nomenclature, but in principle, it's not different. Everything that's collective or individual or leader is tasked, done under certain conditions, and done under certain standards. So, for example, Conduct a deliberate attack, that's a task. Okay. And the standards might be objective, you know, secure, you win. You know, you don't suffer too much for it, you kill the enemy, make sure you do a thorough job, the bastards get away. And no friendly unit endangered by friendly fire action. That, by the way, is the safety issue right there. You know, if you, if you don't make it a briefing, you make it part of the standard, it's likely to work better in my experience and personal opinion. <clears throat> However, what do those objectives mean? What does it mean if you're using a mechanized infantry company and you put a pregnant goat on the objective? Okay. Does the standard mean much that you killed 75% of the goat? No, it doesn't. Now, how do you make the standards? This is what people miss all the time. How do you make the standards mean something? Conditions. If you're a mechanized infantry company, at least I can send straight north from higher objective, deliver an attack at a specified time, 16 hours hence. Why 16 hours hence? Times the troop leading procedure so the individual training takes place within the context of collective training. Plus, it's just the way you're supposed to do it. Alright? It's just, just a disparity, you know? We're not going to give you everything you want. We're going to give you just enough. Make it last. Uh, an offer of duck in with overhead cover with connected trenches. Set off for being not more than 35 straight percent straight. Justin, why do I say with overhead cover? Because that affects your fire planning. It does. Mm -hmm. Right? So what am I teaching? What are we teaching the company commander? And, and his fist? Which fuse to use? And what rounds to use? Shell and fuse combination, yes. Um, off for having document collected extensive waterline and perpendicular hospitals. 18 ditch wall covering all avenues approach. What are you going to have to work on here? Reverse crossing and overcoming hospitals. Bangalore, Bangalore, big time Bangalore. Take it over if you don't have one issue. Okay. Um, Affordable stream between line of departure and the objective. Okay. Here. Get across that goddamn ford within four minutes of your life. It's just going to turn to suck. Okay. Um, also have it, so why do I say priority for one pass mission on call? No, well, that's part of it. Make it count. You may not get it when you ask for it. I didn't say it's there hungry waiting for you. You know? Maybe you'll get it, maybe you won't. Plan for it, don't count on it. Um, and also having extensive radio electronic capability. Okay, what's that one about? Where do you without radio? It's only part of it. It's only part of it. What, what that really means is this is me evaluating the unit going through on my radio, and they start just talking to the goddamn one. So I start jamming. Just like the Russians might say. <coughs> Training and educating yourself. Read. Okay. 
The stack of, in order to train people for war, you need to understand war. To understand war, you either have to spend your lifetime doing it and survive. Okay, not always that easy. Um, or you can read about, read about it. You can read about others' experiences. There's a whole bunch of good stuff out there worth reading about if you want to understand war. Who, who was here, by the way, last year of my principal's war? Eh, Paris, okay. No, unfortunately. Jerry and I might get together and redo one, but it's perilous in our work. Um, listen, but don't be fooled. I, what I'm talking about is, you know, listen to your NCO, sure. But remember, the office board has done a lot of damage here. So, don't take everything with a grain of salt. And now the parable of the worthless battalion commander. I had a battalion commander, my, the first one, when my first one was a company commander, who, no one really knew why he was commanding a battalion, at least of all him. He was out the door at 16.30 every day. You know, I mean, he showed up on time, showed no problem. But, you know, he, he was not deeply interested. I, I can only recall him going to the field with him twice, and one rotation that she said. Um, he, he just wasn't interested. Well, that gave me a great deal of independence. Unfortunately, he didn't have anyone to drive training me, so I had to train myself. I had to be trick for it. I'd write myself a series of battalion operations orders to do certain things, like air roll break, uh, company delivery attack, a river crossing. Okay, fairly detailed, but not ridiculously detailed battalion operations. And I'd put them in a little file, right, and I'd forget about it. And three months later, it would be time to do an air roll raid, and I would pull out this order that I had long since forgotten over from battalion to me, and I would start working off of that, as if it had actually been issued. Um, you know, and it, I, that sounds like it's not ideal. Actually, in fact, it's ideal. If it's ideal, one, that's not going to pinch my back on it. <laughs> okay, I, I told you this, the selection of Lieutenant Fitzgerald. Safety. Yeah, what about it? Um, when this goes up on YouTube, look at this. It's an article I put in Infantry Magazine. I actually got a, a force comp for the State Award when I was in the advanced force. Every, whenever I was in the infantry advanced force and someone said something that pissed me off, I turned it into an article, which at the editor of the magazine at that time, Pro Barber, would, you know, post. If Billy refused to post one, then I stopped writing the um, But this one is concerning safety. It could as well be entitled, um, Why Crafton Thinks the Safety Program is Bullshit. Okay? It was a lot less bad for me than it is for these guys now. Um, and there's a nice little quote to say that Safety is a combat multiplier. All the training publications say so. The problem is it's multiplier with a value of less than one. Go ahead and do the math on that. <laughs> Other thing, okay, if you don't give young men excitement in their lives on duty, they're going to find it off duty. Yeah. You know, on duty, you can control it. You can mitigate it. You can watch out for it. Off duty, no, you can't. I was just reading uh, an instance uh, some laws. It was in the barracks where some poor troops had probably a little had a little bit of drink, wrapped another one up to follow the bait, but this complete cooperation, right? And he said, get ready. Right? So they a bunch of back wrap. So they're stuck. Well, and he's egging them on, right? And they're taking them, and he doesn't do anything. Well, one guy backed all the way up down the end of the corridor and started running and did a kick and he missed the bubble wrap and hit the guy's jaw. Oh. Oh yeah, many pieces, many pieces, many of the um, and that began with four troops, doctors, supervision, who are looking for a little excitement to their lives. Well, that's also one of the, um, they talked about they switched the Army hand-to-hand uh, -hand training over to uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu instead of actually effective hand-to-hand. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Mick Ninja is the stupidest thing known to man. Yeah, and it's, it's designed to keep drunk troops from hurting themselves in the barracks. Well, yeah, you know, you know how you train hand-to-hand? This is getting Get in an no, no, you can train it, it, it but, but here's the trick. If you want to train it and you don't want a massive number of people with broken legs and arms and necks and shit, have them do push-ups until they're dead. Yep. Okay, and then you can do the hand-to-hand -hand training. They think it feels to them like they're hitting full force, but of course they're already exhausted, and they're not. What, what's funny is, as somebody who was uh, trained with uh, some of the uh, crazy uh, ex-Russians, that's pretty yeah. much what they do. Yeah, it's your way to do it. Yeah. Uh, well, there's another thing. I, I remember we were doing garroting one time. Oh, how do you teach someone to garrot? Well, I sent someone over to the hospital. We got a bunch of those columns. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for, for spray nets. And 
and so we debate you without hurting anybody. Um, safety, and the formula when you do it, it stops people from learning the thing. Okay? Uh, the, these stupid little matrices, need to, not only do they need to be banned, but the person who came up with them needs to be either court martialed and shot, or his corpse dug up and desecrated at 10. Right. Yeah, with something small caliber. You're talking about so we screams for a few days. Yeah, that'd be good. The, the operational earth screams. That, that one, yeah, that kind of bullshit. Right, it, it, it's just yeah. covering your ass nonsense. It doesn't have to save you all. Yes, yes. Makes it much more So here's, I, I'm interested in your thoughts on, on this particular safety paradigm. So aviation's a different issue, okay? Agreed. Agreed. Um, understanding that with, in aviation safety, one of the things Anytime that there's an aviation mishap, there's an investigation that happens. There's actually two investigations that happen. The first investigation, chronologically, that happens, that you get all the raw data, is done by is the safety investigation. That investigation is what has what's called a safety privilege, which has been upheld by the Supreme Court. The, the analysis and the conclusions of that investigation cannot be released outside of aviation safety channels. What that means is that I investigate an aircraft mishap, and I come to it, and I decide that the cause of the investigation is that the pilot fucked up. I will brief that in closed door meetings to other aviators with the honesty that comes from that by saying, hey, based on this pilot's testimony that was given to me with a certain amount of confidentiality, understanding that this will not be released outside of these particular channels, this is how he fucked up. The reason we do that is so that we can prevent future fuck-ups from happening. You're, you're, you're paying a small price to get honesty. Sure. Exactly, exactly. After the safety investigation is concluded, the, all of the raw data that the safety board collects goes to the accident investigation. The accident investigation is the one that actually assigns blame and holds, if there is uh, someone to hold accountable, they will hold them accountable. They do not have that the ability to offer uh, confidentiality when soliciting testimony from witnesses. Oh, it would be so interesting to see the difference in testimony. And they are often very, very different. They are often very different. My, my question for you is, do you think that they're understanding, again, that, that because of the technical aspects of aviation versus ground combat, do, but do you think that there is a role for a similar type of paradigm? In ground? Sure. No. Uh, I, I'd say... The kind of accidents we get tend to be the kind of crap that you never predict. You know, you can, and you can't do a damn thing. I'll give you an example. It, it wasn't me, it was a, a, another company. One of his sergeants was tired. Because they've been out in the field for a while, and he was dog tired. And he laid his head down to sleep on the side of the road and attracted a lot of pressure on the street. Tell me how you prevent that one, you know? Don't let him in the army in the first place? Well, baby, yeah. yeah. Uh, as uh, somebody who I, I have a lot of ties in um, the civilian training community, and one thing's like what she's talking about is what I know is it's nothing official like that, but there is um, what professional law enforcement instructors and what professional tough fit instructors say in public, and there's what we say in our closed door and private sure. sessions. Well, look, the real ethos, the way it works in other than aviation, Casey, is that um, the calculation is done, you may have damaged my OER, therefore I'm going to destroy you, irrespective of your guilt. Yeah. Or, or yeah. guilt. Well, unfortunately that happens in aviation as well. It's not supposed to, and that's the reason the safety structure exists the way that it does, but it does happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and in the Army, this results in risk aversion. Yeah, <laughs> like it's all, right. 